Live via satellite from Hollywood and Boston, this is Rockline, the only weekly radio show that lets you interview the biggest names in rock and roll. How you doing? I'm Steve Downs. Rockline is brought to you by Duracell Batteries. No other battery lasts longer. And by AT&T. We help put your world within reach. Tonight, Rockline is pleased to give you the chance to speak directly with Tom Schultz, David Sykes, Gary Peel, and Fran Cosmo of Boston. If you got a question for the band, be sure to dial our toll-free number 1-800-344-ROCK. That's 1-800-344-7625. One number toll-free from anywhere in the United States and Canada. Well, the last time there was a new Boston album out, Ronald Reagan was in the White House, Larry Bird was in the Boston Garden, and, Mike, and Michael Jordan had just finished his rookie year in the NBA. And if you weren't paying close attention, you might think that the last three albums by Boston were all entitled The Long-Awaited New Album By. But after each of those albums, the fans' reaction has always been the same. The wait was worth it. And the new album, Walk On, introduces us to some new Bostonians, joining founder, writer, producer, guitarist, and keyboardist Tom Schultz and bassist David Sykes. Joining us on their first appearance on Rockline tonight, the, me the members of Boston. Uh, Tom, how are you? Uh, I'm fine. How are you doing, Steve? Very good, thank you. David Sykes, welcome to Rockline. Thanks. And also the new members of the band are uh, two out of the three new members on guitar, Gary Peel. Uh, actually, well, it's not the other way around. I, Gary's the oldest member, okay. actually. Right, let's it straighten this out right now. All right, let's get it clear. Let's get it. <laughs> the new one is me. There you go. That's Fran. 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 You hadn't noticed. Fran Cosmo. <laughs> there you go. Uh, now we got it. Okay. Gary is the old guitar player. Yeah. Well, sort of old. Well, he's yeah. pretty old. How old are you? All right, don't answer. <laughs> okay. Now we're getting personal. Gary's been with us for a couple of albums. Fran is yeah. the new one. Okay, now we got it straight. I know for sure that... We don't you, even know his last name yet. Is Andrew. that right? right? Cosmo, I think it is. There uh, you go. And uh, on, on drums, who is not with us tonight, is Doug uh, Huffman. Uh, Tom, let me ask you first off here. Um, uh, it would appear that there's sort of an eight-year cycle happening here between albums, but... Uh, I, it's I, like locusts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, oh, that's seven years. Well, we had it done in seven years. Uh, there you go. But, but I guess that really hasn't been your intent, has it? No, do you mean for it to take uh, seven years? Right. No, I, I would have much rather. Seven weeks would have been great. <laughs> yeah. So then I would have had this summer off. But well, there you go. <laughs> what? No, we're, we're just very, uh, we're, it, it, it takes a long time. We throw more away than we keep. That's the problem. Really? Steve. We throw almost everything away. In fact, I'd throw it all away, but I'm a lousy <laughs> shot when I'm aiming for the wastebasket. <laughs> Actually, we got this one done faster than uh, seven years That's anyway. Right. That's right. We did this. We started in November of 1990. Mm -hmm. So what a memory. Mm -hmm. And we finished it in December of last year. So that was three years and one month. Uh, down from six years for the last one. Well, there you so go. We're, we are accelerating. We're accelerating. <laughs> accelerating those. Well, if, light. You, if you keep it up at this pace, you'll have the next one done by next week then. So that's right. <laughs> yes. That's right. That's right. Now, I, I know that... We're uh, halfway done with it actually now. <laughs> is that right? That You're working. Done. Maybe by the end of the show. Uh, <laughs> now, I know you built a brand new studio, I guess, at, 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 at your place, Tom. Um, what were you looking for, and without, without getting too technical here, but what were you looking for in, in a studio from a sound perspective that, that you couldn't find up until you built the new room? Actually, I was looking for one that had a window. Okay. The, last one was, <laughs> the last one was in a basement. It was nasty. Really? Six years in a basement working on the same record. Uh, we need a little more space mm -hmm. and uh, some special gear that uh, kind of cut down on the, the, the technical production work so that we could concentrate on playing so I didn't have to think about the details of uh, the recording technology mm. so much. Mm -hmm. And that was the reason for building a new studio. And we thought it would make recording the records faster, which it did, but it took two years to build the studio. So uh, You're not, not going to pick on me now, are no, you? No, I'm not. <laughs> did, did, Dave did do some of the wiring. Some of the wiring was done incorrectly. I see. It's, <laughs> been, it's, it's probably Dave's just fault. a coincidence that so it was all, a, all, the, all the things you wired didn't work. It's all your fault, Dave. It was a rewiring problem then. That's right. It, it, was, it was kind of funny to see Tom trying to to mix something and having to kick it to get it to work. We were all in, in and we all were involved in the actual building process. Well, uh, except Fran. We, uh, we, what's your last name, Fran? Co <laughs> Cosmo. Cosmo. You know, he's so new. But I did sing in it. 
he yeah. did sing in it. And he had a nice view, a big swimming pool. Uh, that's in, right. Out the window. Too bad we couldn't have gone swimming in it. Well, there you yeah. go. <laughs> the end result of your label uh, labors is, is uh, this track from the album. This is Walk On, Boston on Rockline. Yeah. That is Boston and Walk On, the title track from the new album, part of actually what's called the Walk On Medley, uh, as it appears on the new record there. From Boston, who are live from Boston tonight, a very special 90 minutes with the guys from the band, and your chance to interview them. And if you want to take that chance, and you better get on the phone right now, call our toll-free AT&T number, 1-800-344-ROCK. That's 1-800-344-7625. Rockline and AT&T, we help put your world within reach. Before we get to your calls for the guys from Boston tonight, we'd like to officially welcome a brand new member to the Rockline family of the best rock radio stations in North America. We're very happy to say hello tonight for the first time to everyone listening to us on Classic Rock 97.3 KRQR in San Francisco. We're extremely proud that you're letting Rockline be a part of your station, and we hope to uh, be hearing from you folks up in the Bay Area tonight and every Monday night on Interactive Radio Rockline. Boston is in Boston tonight, and Tom, I understand you got a, a guitar there nearby whenever the uh, whenever the mood strikes you <laughs> you know we might we might be hearing something tonight it's, so it's, uh, I'm, I'm struck right now but my <laughs> headphone cord won't quite reach that far it's like three feet away from me i can see the lights blinking and everything it's these technical problems you know <laughs> all right next commercial break i'll get it figured out all right let's go to the phones now glenn is our first call tonight he's in durham north carolina listening to wrdu 106 in raleigh glenn say hello to boston Good evening, Boston. How are you? Hey, Glenn. Hey, hey guys. How you doing, buddy? Hey, uh, I wanted to say that uh, in addition to listening to a lot of great rock and roll from you guys over the years, I've really enjoyed uh, all the album artwork, that uh, the uh, guitar concept there. And I wondered uh, who does the artwork and who came up with that original concept? The guy's name was uh, Roger Heisen, the original Boston spaceship uh, designer, designee. Uh, we don't know. We, we don't actually do any of the artwork other than a little bit of the uh, concept work. Somebody else has drawn each one of those pictures for us and done a nice job. Mm, very nice job. Very spectacular artwork. Glenn, thanks for the call. Rick is in Tulsa, Oklahoma tonight listening to 97.5 KMOD. Hey, Rick. Hey, Steve. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Rick. Hey, How you doing? Hey, Rick. Just fine. Now, first of all, I wanted to say that I've been a big fan of Boston for a long time. I saw you guys when you did your uh, Don't Look Back tour. Awesome. And that's been quite a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I have two real quick quick questions for you guys. Um, in what ways do you all feel that Boston has matured as a group since the third stage LP? And, Tom, I also understand that you invented a paperback-sized guitar amplifier with headphones called the Rockman. <laughs> Would you tell me a little bit more about it and if it's for sale to the public? Yeah, it's actually more uh, uh, peanut butter sandwich size. <laughs> It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a right. Uh, yeah, it's a little. Head, that's right. It's a headphone amp that uh, you can record an album with. That's the uh, that's the good part about it. Uh, gives you the sound of a fully produced guitar sound from a studio or live on stage in your phones in your living room. And the best part is that your wife or mother doesn't yell at you while you play it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it is for sale to the general public. It's called the Rockman X100 headphone amp, and there's a couple of other cheaper ones. Uh, and there's also some uh, more professional models called the uh, the Rockman Ultimatum Amp. If you really want to get into it with lots of blinking lights, mm. that's the one to go for. And uh, and the first question there that he had was in terms of, of the, the maturation of the group since third stage. And you, yeah, that's a hard question, yeah. Steve. I think Dave should answer that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think actually we're all still a bit juvenile. We're still very immature. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, um, <laughs> frankly, we're totally immature. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, I think that uh, this music on Walk On is actually, uh, it's, it's a lot more mature in the lyrics. It's all mm -hmm. actual human experiences as opposed to just sort of uh, good time party songs, mm -hmm. which is uh, kind of what the first two albums were about. Uh, they're all real true life emotional experiences, and Walk On itself is uh, a tribute to 
people who stood for uh, stood up for what they believed in and walked the streets for it when it wasn't popular to do so. Mm. So in that way, we've become a little more mature. Unfortunately, when you put microphones in front of us, we're just a bunch of kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rick, thanks for the call. Ken is in Baltimore tonight listening to 98 Rock. Ken, you're on with Boston. Hello, Tom, Gary, David, and Fran Cosmo. Hey, Ken. How are you doing, hey. Ken? I've actually heard Fran on a couple other albums. Uh, congratulations oh. on Walk On. Uh, I love the album. I got it the day it was out, as I have in 1976, 1978, and 1983. And I hear oh, Walk On on Billboard uh, actually hit the 500,000 clip last week I saw. Great. Wow. This guy's keeping track. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, wow. I check Billboard every week and track you guys. I got every newspaper article clipping on Tom and, and, good, and the rest of Boston throughout you, the years. You know more about me than I know. <laughs> What's your I question do? there, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> I know you love My Destination. It's one of your favorites. That's, that's uh, right. Oh, yeah. My, that's right. My question is, because I know a lot of people are trying to call in, uh, and Tom, you may not like this, but uh, we somebody needs oh, okay. to see Boston on TV or something. We need to see a video. Yeah, so do we. I know you don't like yeah, MTV, but good. if we, we went, could see, see something, I think it would help uh, uh, the public. We'd love to do I agree with you. I think you should all send uh, your letters and comments to Al Teller at MCA Records. Yeah. We would love to do a video, and we tried to do, <laughs> we tried to do three of them, but they pulled the budget on all three. Really? And as a matter of fact, they didn't run any TV ads mm. after the teaser, so I think you should call MCA Records yeah, and ask your for friends and call. Uncle Al Teller. <laughs> we'll get that home number. to him. We'll that get that home we number. On, that we need to be on TV. There you go. From the second album by Boston on Rockline, this is Don't Look Back. That's Boston from the second album, the title track, Don't Look Back. They are live in Boston tonight on Rockline for their very first appearance on the show. We go back to the phones. Tom, I understand you got that little headphone cord <laughs> problem straightened out. We got that. We got that covered. <laughs> could, be right. ready, could be ready to rock. Uh, we're going to go to Wormleysburg, Pennsylvania now. Uh, 93.5 WTPA in Harrisburg is our station there. And Mike, you're on with Boston. Tom, you are my hero. Oh, thank you. Uh, hey, hey. Yeah, and also, Fran, with all respect to Brad, you were the man for the job. Welcome yeah. to the band. Hey. Yeah. 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 That's what we think, Get too. down tonight. <laughs> Great. Uh, my question is, is for Tom, uh, and that is that throughout the period of time that it takes for Boston to record an album, and by the way, thank That's you for never problem. releasing an album before its time. Um, my question is, is there any material that didn't make the final cut that we may see coming out in the near future? And also, is it true from what I read that there was a collaboration, like a live recording between Boston and Sammy Hagar doing Dock of the Bay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have this to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> and he means no. I, that's a, I tried to play that on Dock of the Bay, and he said, "I don't think it fits." <laughs> that doesn't sound like seagulls. <laughs> I, oh my! I, I should have done my seagull. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I forgot the other question. Already. Uh, is there no. is there any unreleased material from from no, these once, sessions? That once we throw it away, it's gone. Really, I mean, it's gone, gone. Yes, we, we throw it away real good. Matter of fact, start it, over again. It was on your. Otherwise, phone, how could we make it take seven years? <laughs> but actually, we did have uh, some partial songs that that were sort of left over from this that uh, we threw away. <laughs> no, no. They're all no. thrown away. I, I, I snuck into the garbage can and saved them. They, they he doesn't them. know that. Because honest, I found it it's in the trash a... can. They know there's a there's a, a bootleg tape around called Honest. I found it in the trash can. Uh huh. Yeah. And you could find a lot of stuff in the trash That's can. That's true. Right. If, if you look, I did. If you look hard enough, I guess. Jeez, might be now we put it in a shredder. Record. Real and all. <laughs> Shred it. Yeah, it sounds like you were shredding there just a minute ago, too, man. It sounded great. We are live in Boston with the members of Boston. We'll have more music, more from the new album, and more of your phone calls coming up on the Global Satellite Network. Join us next Monday night on Rockline for what promises to be an excellent evening of music and conversation with the Spin Doctors. We've been trying to get these guys on Rockline for some time. We're happy to finally be able to give you the chance to talk to them. 90 Minutes with the Spin Doctors next Monday night exclusively on Interactive Radio Rockline. Steve Downs here in our Hollywood studios. Boston's Tom Schultz, Fram Cosmo, David Sykes, and Gary Peel are in Boston tonight, live all over North America. Got a track from the wildly successful debut album by Boston. And, uh, Tom, you got a little custom 
rock line intro to this next one? Yeah, that's right. This is the this is the way I wanted to do that song, but uh, I had two choices. It was the way it showed up on the record, and here's the way I wanted to do it. It's a real kind of sensitive uh, intro <laughs> to it. It's uh, kind of kind of went like this, sort of, basically. What do you think? <laughs> Take it. <laughs> it's a ride from Boston with uh, accompanied by Tom Schultz, circa 1994 there, live from Boston tonight. Uh, we head back to the phones now. Uh, Brantford, Ontario is our next stop, Q107 in Toronto, our station. Chris, say hello to Boston. Greetings to the men who have made my album collection. Okay. Hey, how you doing out there? I'm not doing too bad, but let me tell you, if CDs get wrecked from overplaying, it's time for me to start investing in backups right now. <laughs> There <laughs> you go. Uh, a few All questions. Right. Number one, and I'm going to be thrown off the line here, and I don't have an affiliate where I can listen to right now. I'm on vacation. When are you people hitting Southern Ontario? Well, oh, we don't want to hit it. We're, we're very nonviolent. <laughs> which is, Coming in for our landing. Yeah, uh, we're going to hopefully be out starting out late in the fall. That's what we're shooting for. Hmm. Uh, We'll probably hit we'll probably hit Ontario right in the dead of winter when it's the most bitter cold <laughs> that yeah. Canada can that. Po possibly be. That's when we'll be there. Just when you like it. The worst blizzard of the year that Canada has. We will be there. We will blow in Believe on it. it. There you go. <laughs> Chris, what's your second question? What inspired you to come up with Hitch a Ride? What did inspire that? Yeah, what did inspire <laughs> you with that, Tom? Oh, I was waiting for you to answer. He was that, looking at me for that. <clears throat> I'm Dave. He was looking at me to answer that. Well, I we didn't know. know you I think that, that was a, I, that was a visit to New York City. Now, no offense, New York. I don't want to get letters from New York City, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a good thing for New York City. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of smoggy there the first day I went. So. Mm. All right, Chris. Thanks for the call. Michelle is in Little Rock, Arkansas, listening to Magic 105 tonight. Hey, Michelle. Hi. Hi, Hi. Michelle. Hello, Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi. My question's for Tom. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was wondering, would you or have you ever considered making an all-instrumental album for us uh, who pay particular attention to the instrumental aspects of your music? Well, then I wouldn't need Fran or Dave. <laughs> hey, 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 Michelle, watch this. Yeah, that. that's a good idea. Are the wheels turning idea. there? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Gee, thanks yeah, a that's lot. a great idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Heavy bummage. <laughs> yeah. Tom, 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 would you ever consider doing something? I mean, say, if you wanted to do something that was, say, very removed from what, you know, the Boston sound is, would that be uh, a possible avenue? I don't know how to play anything except Boston. That's mm. my problem. Mm. Everything I play ends up sounding like Boston. <laughs> I, it's sort of a, I don't know if that's a curse or a blessing, but it's the only thing I know how to do. It's true. But he picked up an accordion last week, and it right. sounded, I mean, like Boston. That's <laughs> <immediately>. <laughs> he played a polka, and it sounds just like Boston. <laughs> everything. Uh, actually, Walk On was an instrumental. And then... Uh, then Fran sang on it by accident. Yeah. <laughs> Turned it into what it is now. Wow. Maybe someday. We, I, there's always an instrumental on every album, if you notice. So I do, right. I do like having instrumental cuts. Yeah, there's some great instrumental pieces. They're hard on to sing album, along so. with, though. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can, can remember the words. We're going to talk to uh, Dean now, who's in Alameda, California, listening to our brand new affiliate tonight, 97.3 KRQR in San Francisco. Hey, Dean. Tom, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, this is directed to Tom, please. Where are all the other band members from? Oh. Uh, well, I just met these guys in the parking lot. Yeah, we're, the, we're for the parking lot. <laughs> Especially Gary, that new guitar player. <laughs> all right. Well, Gary, where are you from? Okay, well, originally Chicago, Illinois. Hmm. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Francois Formaggio Cosmo. Upstate New York, Utica. Davio. Does anyone and, know where uh, Utica is? I don't know. And David, I live uh, very near you, uh, just north of San Francisco, in a little town called uh, Benicia. Mm. And me, myself, Tom, I'm from uh, Toledo. Toledo, Ohio, Ohio originally, that's right? In that's in Ohio, not Spain. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Ohio one. <laughs> All right, Dean, thanks for calling uh, this, thanks, next, uh, this next track from the new album. This one is pure Boston all the way. Once again, from the new album on Rockline, this is I Need Your Love. I need your love 
from Boston from the new album Walk On. Be sure to send in your postcards for your chance to win one of our 94 Rockline AT&T calendars signed by the guests that appear on the show during the month of August. To be eligible to win, put your name, address, and the station you're listening to right now on a postcard. Mail it to 1994 Rockline calendar, P.O. Box 4383, Hollywood, California, 90078. The 94 Rockline calendars are brought to you by AT&T. We help put your world within reach. More from Tom, Gary, David, and and Fran, Boston on Rockline on the Global Satellite Network. Just a reminder that everyone who gets on the air tonight with the members of Boston will receive an autographed copy of the new album, Walk On, courtesy of our friends at MCA Records. We head back to the phones now. Our next stop, Warren, Rhode Island, 94 HJY in Providence, our station there. Sarah, you're on Rockline. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Hey, how you doing? Um, you have my favorite band, and I'd uh, like to know, you have a classic rock sound that's not like any band I've ever heard well, before. How did you um, develop this? Well, how did we do that classic rock sound? Uh-huh. You know what? I think it was dumb luck, Sarah. Which is <laughs> 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 the only way we knew how to play. Um, I don't know how to answer that one. Hmm. It's just the only kind of music that that we know how to make. Mm. We keep trying to do other kinds of music and it comes out like Boston. <laughs> we just give up. Yeah. Well, and it sort of defined what, what has now become, you know, known as classic rock, really, didn't it? I mean, uh, you know, it wasn't classic when you first did it, but it, it kind of came out that way later. Mm. We lucked out. Yeah. Sarah, thanks for the call. Pat is in Erie, Pennsylvania tonight listening to Rocket 101. Pat, you're on Rockline. Boston, great works, man. Hey, hey, thanks, man. Like your music. Hey, I wanted to thank you first for uh, commending the pro animal groups. That's very cool. And uh, my question is to Tom. I believe it was you in a recent interview on our radio station. Uh, you made a comment on a third stage of Cool the Engines. There was something about Prelude in G minor, and I was wondering what the story was behind that, what turned you on to it to incorporate into that song. And if you know who did it, could you please tell me so I could turn on to it? Uh, let's see. Well, yeah, it was a mistake. It should be uh, Prelude in C sharp minor, and it was by Rachmaninoff. And I also got the song wrong too, because it's <laughs> 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 uh, it's actually uh, uh, that's a classic piece, very very heavy uh, classic piece by Rachmaninoff, and uh, a lot of the chords that you hear in uh, in several Boston songs actually are uh, sort of um, they weren't they weren't lifted they weren't stolen I, I didn't steal them really uh, they weren't lifted but they were uh, inspired. inspired thank mm-hmm. you that's mm-hmm. the word I was looking for because they're different chords but the uh, it's the same sort of effect Rachmaninoff wasn't that to do with a with a really cool hair yeah he had good, <laughs> really, yeah. good hair he had really good hair, hair. Yeah. really big hair <laughs> is, is there classical training there Tom for you or, or I mean there's obviously an interest I guess but actually it was it, it was my mother trying to keep me out of her hair she would just plop me in front of the speaker and turn it up all the way. I had this big stack of classical records, mm. which is the only reason I know about that stuff. Wow. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Pat, for the call. Ryan is uh, back up in the Great White North, Thunder Bay, Ontario, listening to 94 FM ton- tonight. Ryan, you're on with Boston. Hey, guys. It's an honor talking with you. Thank hey, you. Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. I just wanted to know who produced your new album. The one and only. Mm. That was <laughs> Tomasio Schulz himself. <laughs> I take all the blame for that, Ryan. I did it with my little studio. Wow. <laughs> um, uh, we had a call there er- earlier that mentioned some of the uh, the pro animal groups that, that that you're involved in, and on this album, uh, of course, you you go in uh, there as you open up the sleeve, you list a lot of the organizations, phone numbers, on where you can get in touch with, and that sort of thing. Um, h- how did that involvement start uh, in in terms of wanting to ha- have the group and sort of raise awareness here? How did that How did they get started for you? Well, that's kind of a long story. Uh, I've been uh, trying to do what I can to help out groups that are working for uh, uh, non-violence, anti-violent groups for many, many years. Um, we sort of got into the, the animal rights end of things uh, over the years when it, it, it saw a few things came to my attention. And the other guys in the band have uh, contributed very heavily to it. 
as well as me. Uh, there's an awful lot of things going on that people ought to be aware of because they could make the world a little bit better place just by refraining from doing or buying certain things. And we've listed those on the album. And uh, the ones we listed on the album were, uh, in particular, uh, not to uh, buy veal, mm -hmm. uh, to help uh, stop veal, the crating of veal calves, which I won't describe in detail, but is a pretty hor horrifying thing. Uh, not to buy furs uh, because of what is done to the animals on fur farms and with leg hold traps when they're caught. Uh, and also to uh, uh, report domestic violence uh, to help uh, help curb and help uh, get the situation under control with uh, violence against women and children. And as I said, uh, when you buy the album, there is uh, some some detailed information on, on the addresses and phone numbers and whatnot. And I guess part of the proceeds from Walk On also go to a number of these, uh, these issues that Tom has raised. Ryan, thanks for the call. Jeff is in Greenville, South Carolina tonight listening to Rock 101. And Jeff, you're on Rock Line with Boston. All right, I uh, got one one question, uh, Mr. Tom. Hello. I think you're one of the greatest ever. Hey, what a guy! But I got one question: the uh, Walk On uh, new single you have released. Um, uh -huh. It goes uh, Walk On, and then I think you know you can notice the change between Walk On and Walk On Two, where you have uh, spliced the single together or to me it seems like that i agree mm -hmm. i agree <laughs> i don't like edits i don't like edits i like edits even less than you like them <laughs> i think everybody should play the 13 minute version of that but <laughs> they, they didn't <laughs> <laughs> they just didn't <laughs> all right jeff thanks for the call we're going to go into uh, cool the engines here tom and i know we had a call there earlier talking about uh, the intro uh, to that as it appears on the album i wonder if you might want to uh, whip one up for us uh... <laughs> oh sure <laughs> since you ask I said, yeah, here it is <laughs> <laughs> Boston on Rockline. Right, our next call is Daryl. He's in Kennesaw, Georgia, listening to 96 Rock in Atlanta. Hey, Daryl. Hi. Hi, hey. Tom. Hi. Hey, Daryl. Hey, Daryl. <laughs> um, first of all, Tom, I'd like to, uh, I've been waiting my whole life to thank you for the uh, incredible music you've been making. <laughs> thank you. This is great. And uh, I have some questions for Fran, actually. <laughs> Oh, how hey. you doing? <laughs> uh, I have a CD from uh, Orion. Yeah. And uh, that sounds a lot like you. It uh, sounds a lot like me? Yeah, I'd like to know, first of all, where you're from well, and isn't. how did you get to become the new singer for Boston? How did I get to be the new singer in Boston? What time I auditioned different singers. And uh, I guess he decided to go with me. And well, actually, we really else, we uh, found him we wandering in the street. Yeah. <laughs> he needed a home. Say, we, uh, we haven't made that decision for sure to go. <laughs> 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 yeah. So a bit of a probationary period here. And yeah, we're trying oh, yeah. you out on this album. I don't know. He worked pretty. What do you think, Dave? I mean, he's okay. <laughs> I kind of like him. I don't yeah. know. Hey, Fran. Fran, what yes. do you think are, are the unique aspects of of being a member of Boston that that would make it different than any other group? Oh, there's a lot of fringe benefits here. Oh, <laughs> Boston's right. been very, very good to, to me. me. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way we thought you'd say it. Exactly like you were here. There you go. <laughs> All right. All right, Daryl. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Daryl, uh, thanks for the call. We're going to talk to Barrett now, who's in Friendswood, Texas, listening to 101 KLOL in Houston. Barrett? Yes. You're on Rockline. Okay. First question is for the whole entire band. Why... You, what made you guys decide to use all natural instruments and no synthesizers, computers, or samplers? Okay, we should all answer at the same time, right? <laughs> the whole band. Uh, let's see. I know. The reason is it's because all we had. That's the reason. And we didn't know how to run those other ones. They're way too complicated, too many buttons, and they sound crummy. Yeah, we like the sound of the real ones. 
In fact, people ask us live, do we use samplers or anything for uh, vocal backups or guitar parts, extra parts? Because there are a lot of harmony guitar parts on the albums. Mm -hmm. We say, no way, absolutely no way. When you hear us singing, either it's on key or off key, but that's us. <laughs> what do you mean? It's always, it's always on key. You it's it, always Darian. on key. Come yeah, on. Just, yeah, you know, if it was an instrumental thing, then there wouldn't have to be any off key singing. I, I have yeah. to say, oh, heavy bum, I have gonna, to say, so there, there is actually some synthesizers. Um, that's right. On that's a right. couple songs. That's right. Yes, there's, there a, is. there's a string, a string uh, uh, machine at the start of Living, Living for, for you, you, which is our favorite pick for a single. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And um, what else? A harpsichord. The harpsichord is also uh, a synthesizer um, traded in the old uh, clavinet that I used to use for mm -hmm. a harpsichord. But that's it. Everything else is uh, on naturel. Yeah, and on they, were, naturel. they were really played. They weren't any, any computer sequence or anything like that. Right. They were played. Somebody actually played the instruments. Yeah, it's is, hard yes. to believe, isn't yeah. it? it re refreshing in this day and age. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> Nobody standing in the wings uh, playing the sampler, pretending, you know. Right. Uh, Josh is in uh, Quakertown, Pennsylvania tonight, listening to 94 WYSP in Philly. Josh? Tom, I got Josh. a question for Tom here. Okay. Tom, you've been a great inspiration, man. Thank you. Um, I, hope I got a question for you. Good. I understand you have a son. That's uh, right. Right, just keeping up on you a little bit. Um, yes, did your homework. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing my homework. Um, I just wanted to know, uh, I know you had a great career at MIT. Uh, came out of MIT with a lot of great stuff. I survived. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I just want to know, is your son following up on your career? Is he going into music? Does he play an instrument? Or? As a matter of fact, he plays sax. Uh, but uh, he's, he's his own person from uh, right from the get-go. And uh, he, he does the things he likes, not the things I like. Mm. Would you uh, encourage or discourage if, if uh, he wants to get into the music business? I think I'd let him. Uh, I think I'd let him do what he felt was the the uh, the best thing for him to do when it comes to that. There's no reason to push. Uh, I, I don't think any child in one direction or another, mm -hmm. if he wants to be artistic or technical or athletic, um, as long as he tries to do a decent job of uh, of of learning and and giving himself a fair shot for later in life. Right. Absolutely. Don't push him. They made me take piano lessons, you know. Is that right? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it paid off the eventually. The piano teacher gave up. Uh, is that right? <laughs> We're live on Rockline tonight from Boston, Massachusetts. Here's Boston, the rock and roll band. back live with Tom Scholz, Gary Peel, David Sykes, and Fran Cosmo from Boston tonight. Back to the phones now. Eric is in New Orleans, listening to 99.5 WRNO-FM in New Orleans. Hey, Eric. Hey, how you doing out there? Hi, guys. I was just wondering, um, how come all your albums have to do sort of with outer space, all the covers on the albums? We're very, very spacious. Very spacious. <laughs> you probably noticed by Fran's name, Cosmo. Cosmo. Yeah. Kind of, uh, Cosmic. Actually, that is, that is not his name. He is a, actually a Cosmo not. <laughs> I see. Did it? Did it? <laughs> I don't know. What? I don't know. Because, because it's a, it has that space, is that, that mm -hmm. infinity of being, the, the, the no end, the no beginning, the. The infinity I don't know. of the spaceships all. really looked great, Eric. Yeah. That's what it came down to. We just well, liked them. And, Are any and, of you a. A, a, a sci-fi uh, aficionado, as it were. And, and we weren't that great at playing, but we are really good at those spaceship sounds. <laughs> like so that's, <laughs> that's why we did that. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I don't know. Are you a space fiction? Space you fiction? Went to the I am space fiction. Yeah, yeah he okay. is. <laughs> I am space fiction. Uh, James is in Bell City, Oklahoma tonight, listening to Rock 100.5, The Cat in Oklahoma City. James? Good evening. Hi, hey, James. Jim. Good evening. Pretty good. How y'all? We're fine. Uh, so my question is for Tom or whichever one or which uh, whichever band member would like to uh, take it. Uh, my first question is uh, the kind of musical instruments that was used on the first two albums, with the advent of technology and what you all used on the last the the third and fourth album. Uh, what kind of uh, what kind what kind of instruments do you all like to use personally, and do you all like to still uh, use the old instruments? 
And my second question is, uh, you all, uh, the band became uh, known just about a right, uh, right around the disco era. From that point Ooh. going forward, uh, what, kind of, what kind of music that's come about since then does each band member like to listen to? Ooh, that's a... That's oh. a long question. Okay, who, who, wants who remembers the, the first part of that question? <laughs> the, the old, the old instrument. Part I got the it. first. Yeah. Part. Yes, that's right. Well, actually, we are still. I'm holding in my hand the same guitar that was used on the first album. Actually, mm -hmm. the infamous and, Les and Paul. The, the infamous gold top Les Paul. So, uh, we play primarily wooden instruments. Is what we like the the non non metallic, non electronic kind. Mm -hmm. uh, traditional rock and roll instruments. We still use those. Right. Uh, Second part of that question. Well, Go ahead, I mean, Dave. Part of that, I was going to say, though, part of that uh, of the technology is with the advent of your invention of the rock man to make the recording and no. now performing part easier, too. You're, you're going to embarrass me, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. See, I have to speak up. This is Gary here talking to you. I have to speak up because Tom won't blow his own horn here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But uh, around 1982, Tom invented the rock man. We talked about that briefly a little bit before. But it was something that was so revolutionary that nobody could believe it. It's this little box, again, about the size of a peanut butter sandwich. You plug your guitar into it, and it's got headphones about the size of a Walkman. And it sounds like this. Like <laughs> When you hold this thing in your hand and you get this huge sound out of it, you can't believe it. Everybody I saw that put one on for the first time said their mouth dropped open and oh, said, yeah. this is impossible. What's it plugged into? How can they get this sound out of this little bitty box? So not only was it great to uh, listen in headphones, but you can take a direct send right out of that to record with. And that's what uh, Tom did. In fact, uh, some other people even beat us to it. Uh, yeah, that's right. We weren't the first one to put that on record. Is that right? There's, it, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of other... Def Leppard used it before we did. and uh, It goes from A to Z, from Alabama to ZZ Top of wow. uh, people that have used it for yeah. making hit records. That's and uh, So it's an amazing thing. So and and uh, the second part of that question, I think, was in terms of who, who do you like or, or maybe what styles of music a, a, have, do you like currently or we'll say within the last couple of years or any, anything you're gravitating towards in terms of personal listening? In the last mm. couple of years? Go ahead, Dave. Well, I'm a confirmed dinosaur, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tom and I discovered... Uh, one of the first things that I discovered about that I had in common with Tom is that uh, we both loved uh, the James Gang Rides Again album. Yeah. Oh, that's a great record. Uh, big Get down, baby! <laughs> <laughs> that and uh, some of the early Jeff Beck records and... Things like oh, that. Those yeah. are still Jeff some Beck. of my favorite records, to tell you the truth. And the first two Led Zeppelin albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah those are great. Okay. That's all I know. <laughs> oh, man. Can you guess that song in yeah. three notes? <laughs> I, think, I think we can get that one. That sounded great. Uh, somebody mentioned uh, sci-fi earlier. This next song has a bit of a sci-fi theme to it. It's called What's Your Name? From the new one by Boston on Rockline. What's your name from the new Boston album, Walk On? They're with us live on Rockline tonight. We uh, now go to Riverside, Missouri, the Rock 98.9 in Kansas City is our station. And Willie, you're on with Boston. Hey, guys. How are you doing tonight? Good. Hey. Really good, Willie. Well, I wanted to let you know that you are my all-time favorite band, and Living For You is one of my favorites, too. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Favorite. There's another vote. For a single, that's right. There's another one. Yeah, yes. also, uh, What's Your Name, the song we just heard, what exactly does that mean? Ooh, Ooh that's a tough question. <laughs> uh, well, if you listen to the lyrics real close, that's a song about what to say to somebody that you run into that you really want to talk to and you can't figure out what to do. So uh, you come up with something really wild out of the blue or from outer space in the case of that song. Uh, there's a, you have to read the, you'll have to read the lyrics. Um, and if there's a uh, line in there that's guaranteed to make anybody laugh at you when you use it. <laughs> <laughs> Tom knows he tried it. <laughs> that's right. I tried it. It didn't work. And you it also, made a good song, though. In, in your descriptions of some of the songs on the, uh, on the sleeve there, you all also talk about uh, that the song is for people who think E.T. was a true story. That's right. That's, That's right. Neat. All right, Willie, thanks. We're going to head back to the West Coast now, Fremont, California, 97.3 KRQR in San Francisco, our new station. And Jim, you're on with Boston. Boston, how we doing? Good. Hey, doing hey, Jim. Good. hey I've been a fan just forever, and it's just, this is the biggest thrill ever. Right to the point here, two quick questions. Um, Tom, I've got a uh, live recording of you guys in Long Beach, California. And there's a song on there called uh, Television Politician. Uh, oh, what are the chances that'll ever be released? 
Uh, other than the bootleg you got, probably <laughs> never. <laughs> we played that on our last we like tour. That. Yeah, we like to play that live, though. Uh, so come and see us when we get to Long Beach or wherever you are now, and we will uh, play that. Maybe we'll dedicate it, as a matter of fact. Yeah, we like that song. Live. That's a good live song. And, Jim, you have another question? Bean Town, or is that the only place you guys do recordings? Yeah, we only record in one place, the Basement Hideaway Studio. Hmm. Two. On the side of a mountain, far away, hidden from every... No. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like Kip Captain Midnight from the old days. Oh. All right, Jim. Uh, we're going to now go to uh, Zach, Yo. who's in uh, Yakima, Washington, listening to 94.5 Cats in Yakima. Hey, Zach. Hi, I was uh, curious, when are you guys going to be touring, and uh, when can I expect a new album to be released, even though this one just came out? Oh. Um, well, first of all, the tour. What I hear is late fall, as far as touring goes. Mm -hmm. The Blizzard tour. <laughs> the album will happen sometime after that. <laughs> At we're, some we're shooting for before the. But we're gonna we're gonna try and beat the millennium. Beat the millennium. We want we want to we want to be sure we have five albums before the year two thousand. Before That's the year. That's our goal. <laughs> you have to keep your goals realistic. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. All right, Zach. We will be back on the Global Satellite Network with more from Boston in just a minute. We are back, and time just to thank everybody for listening and for calling in tonight. Be sure to join us next Monday night for a great night with the Spin Doctors. Coming up, 90 Minutes with a band out of Sacramento, California, Tesla. Special thanks tonight to Jim Collins for his help, to Gina Iarillo and Randy Miller from MCA Records, to Jennifer Winters and all of our friends at Soundtrack Studios there in Boston. As usual, a pleasure working with y'all. And also to Ron Lipkin for his help. And finally, to our guest tonight, Tom, David, Gary, and Fran from Boston. Real quickly, guys, what might we expect tour hardware-wise uh, come this fall? Tour hardware. A really surprising uh, spaceship appearance and a larger than ever uh, pipe organ. Really? Large pipe organ. Very, very, <laughs> very large. We'll large. look forward to that. It's Extremely be, large. It'll be exciting. Look for Boston out on the road late this fall, early winter. Thanks again, guys. We really uh, appreciate having you on the show. Hey, Steve, 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 you. Steve, you're the best. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate hey, it. Thanks a lot. Steve Downs. See you.